Hello, this is Pastor Tony Collins from the House of Worship, and I hope you're having a blessed week this week. If you are, you came to the right place. If, you, if you're not, you came to the right place anyway, because I have, we have another anointed word for you. Uh, we're continuing our celebration of our uh, one year of being on WVLR, and by sharing with you some of the messages from our associate, associate ministers. And today we're going we're gonna to feature Minister Larry Tate Sr. and his message uh, the upward call. I want you to know no matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself, that God has a call on your life. There, he did not create anyone that he did not have a, a calling, a purpose, and an inheritance for their life. And so God has a call for your life, and that call is always going to be upward. It's always going to be higher. It's always going to be in the, in the direction of God, in the direction of heaven, in the direction of holy things. So let's go into the service and, and catch the message, and I'll be back in a few moments. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Everybody stand, please, honor God. It reads as follows. This is Paul. He said, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Jesus Christ. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call. Everybody say upward call. For the upward call, hallelujah, of God in Christ Jesus, you may be seated. That's where I'm coming from. My focus is going to be on the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, the upward, the upward, upward call of God in Christ Jesus, moving forward to the next level. If I were to say to you something like this, to infinity and beyond, you recognize that? To infinity and beyond. That's uh, first, that may not be the first, but I got that from Buzz Lightyear, the Toy Story movie. You know, he was that uh, space ranger that uh, couldn't fly, but he could fall gracefully, you know. And he would say, to infinity and beyond. But, you know, that's also the cry of the, the atheist. That's the cry of the scientist. That's the, 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 the cry of the, the, the evolutionist. To infinity and beyond, like the Russian scientist said, we've been out in outer space like they almost, almost been, think they've been to infinity, but we didn't see God. You know why? Because they didn't go beyond infinity. Because that's where God is. But I like to say it like this. I say to eternity and beyond. And that's where God wants to take us, to eternity and beyond. And I'm going to be talking about three things today as pertaining to uh, uh, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, the first is going to be uh, that what God wants us to go to. He wants us to go uh, uh, on to perfection. That, that's the upward call that God is calling us to. He's calling us to perfection. The second thing he's calling us to is to go beyond created things. That's holding us back. Really, created things is really holding us back. And we need to go beyond those created, created things because he has done something that goes beyond created things in us. Even though he's still God, he's still sovereign. But he wants to go, go to perfection, go beyond created things. And whatever you're doing, to go beyond, excel still more. Whatever you're doing right, whatever you're doing good, whatever you used to do that wasn't right, wasn't good, wasn't holy, wasn't perfect, forget that. But what you did yesterday, forget that too, and excel still more. Always increasing, always abounding in the love, always growing, always maturing, always moving. That's what living things do. And we're going to see the upward call, and especially the way God intended for things living to do, upward, upward growth. That's the way they go. That's the way he intended to be. And we're going to see that. But one thing in particular I must say, you know, sometimes of time we get up here and we preach the word, but uh, I mean, uh, it's a go beyond what? Go beyond what? What is Paul going beyond? And this is Paul, his own word, speaking this. Hebrews chapter 6. No, let's go to, yeah, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. And this is what he said. 
And this, going to, this, this would rattle some people, but we spend a whole bunch of time in this. This is churchology. This is, whole, this, this is what we spend a lot of time doing in the meetings, uh, in the classes, uh, in the, uh, 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 even in Bible study and stuff like that. But this is what Paul said. He said, this is what we do a lot of things, learn. He said, therefore, leaving the elementary teachings about Christ. We have been too much elementary teaching about Christ in the church. That's why we can't get done what needs to be done because we're still elementary. Time for you to well, us to, to get out of the elementary school and progress on. He said, therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about Christ, let us, he said it again, press on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance. We know that. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. We already know that. And of the faith towards God. We know we should have faith to God. We know these things. Don't we have to go over them over and over and over and over? We need to get moving. He said of the instruction about worship. Uh, I mean the washings and laying on of hands. And the, the, the resurrection of the dead. And eternal judgment. Those things should be settled with us. We should have a, a, a grounding in those things. Know that that is the foundation and move on, press on to maturity. And this we would do if God permits. And that's what I hope he's going to do for us today because we've got a work to do and a business to do about God. Now, hopefully this message today will enable us to understand something about who God is and what he has, particularly for the house of worship. But I believe it's universal for all of creation, all of his uh, uh, the thing that all his churches, especially those who are the spiritual church, church individual. Church local, church universal, everybody talking about, but don't hear much talking about the church spiritual. Now, that's the church. That's where we got to move into, the church spiritual. That's the one that's going to honor God, obey God. They're going to do God's work, accomplish what he want done here. Now, the other church can do a lot of things. They're doing a lot of work. But this, the heart of it is the gospel, and the church spiritual is going to get that done. Moving forward to the next level, the upward call of God in Christ. And let's understand one thing, that the prize is Jesus. The prize is Jesus, but there is a, a, an upward call of God in Christ Jesus that we need to see and understand. The first I said is an, uh, uh, a call to perfection, a call upward. Okay, can you hear the call? If you're born again, if you know Jesus, you've got the Holy Spirit, you should hear that call. You should hear that call. I can't say naturally hear that call. You should supernaturally hear that call. You do hear that call. It's there in you already. It's moving and it's working in you right now. But can you hear the call? If you can hear the call, which way do you look? If somebody call your name, where are you going to look? You're going to look to where that voice is coming, where that sound is coming from. I mean, you're going to look to the right. You're going to look to the left. You're going to look forward. You're going to look behind. You're going to look down. But this is an upward call. So which way are you going to look? We're going to look up. This is an upward call, and we're going to always be looking up because it's God who's calling us to do something, to be something, to go somewhere, to make things happen. It's an upward call, and we're going to look up because that's where the voice is coming from. That's where our Simon is coming from. That's who we'll know who we are and what we should be doing right now. So I want everybody who's born again, love the Lord, know Jesus Christ in the fullness of forgiveness of sin, covered by the blood that you said, to look up. Look up and say, thank you, Jesus. Look up and say, thank you, Lord. I look up and say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for talking and speaking to me and showing me the way, oh God. Look up. It's an upward call that's calling you. Don't look down. You've got no reason to look down. Romans 8, 28 says, you know the verse. It says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You're called for those whom he foreknew. He also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he he called, he also justified, and these whom he justified, he also glorified. Don't tell me God doesn't share his glory. Don't tell me God doesn't share his glory. I heard it all my life. All my life, God doesn't share his glory. He glorified me. He said so. I didn't say it, and I claim it. I receive it. He makes all things glorious. Everything to do with, the, with him, he makes glorious. And if you follow him, if you answer that upward call and obey, he'll make you and whatever you do glorious.
Do you desire to have a positive impact in your family, in the lives of those you meet, and in your church? Do you see your life service as a ministry and not as a job or chore? Do you believe that your productive, positive membership in the body of Jesus Christ is an essential element to Christian mission, maturity, and ministry? If so, you will find 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins to be a relevant contribution toward this spiritual objective. 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins is both scriptural and practical. This book offers excellent tools to help anyone handle the business and ministry of the church with excellence. Whether it is serving as part of the usher ministry or developing leaders or growing disciples. The practical applications and implications of 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins are enormous. If you desire to make a positive change in your home or in your congregation, if you are currently a leader or desire to become one in any capacity, this book is a must read. The principles contained in this book, 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins, will provide you with the purpose, power, and truth that you will use to make a dramatic positive difference for the rest of your life. Begin your journey today to positive change by ordering your copy of 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know by Anthony Collins. Simply visit our website, www.thehouseofworship.com, and click on the Shop tab, or you can send $16.95, which includes tax, shipping, and handling to the House of Worship, 190 Manhattan Avenue, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 37830. Don't wait. Order today and watch the hand of God move in your life. But let me give you one example, maybe two, the upper call. You know, it's, it's, it's like, look at nature. Look, look at fire. Look at fire. Okay. Fire always burns which way? Up. Fire burns up. If I, if, if, if I were to take a match and I light it and I hold it like this, flame going to go up, right? If I turn it sideways, the flame going to go. Go sideways? No, it's going to go up. If I turn it that way, it's going to go up. If I turn it down, which way it's going to go? It's still, if I try to hold it down, what's what that flame going to do? And then what's going to happen to my hand trying to hold it down? I'm going to get burnt, right? That's the same way God going to do whatever it is trying to hold you down. Whatever it is that's trying to keep you from going up like God calls you to go up, don't make no difference what it is. The, 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 the God who I serve said I'm more than a conqueror. There's nothing, the evil can't even touch me. There's no darkness, there's no part in me. It's going to burn it up. It's going to rise up what's in me. Greatest heat is in me, the heat is in the world. We got to understand that. We got power over these things. We got authority to speak the word of God over these things. And it's going to, whatever it is trying to hold me down, I'm still going to rise up. It can't stop me. It can't hold me down. Like it couldn't hold Jesus in the grave, it can't hold me down on the earth. It can't. It's impossible. And I know this, and it's God's doing. I know my trust and faith in God. He said that, and I know it's true. No matter what it is, situations. I don't have to name it so many. Sickness, health, they don't make no difference. Finances, they don't make no difference. Uh, people, uh, 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 enemies, it doesn't make any difference. They're going to be like that flame. They're going to burn them. They are going to feel the, the heat from it. Because God, my God, is going to do it for me. Because he always put that in me to rise up. Another example, I'll give you one more. Now they got to move on. Uh, let's, let's just check this out. This is anything from nature. They will understand. We're going to see some else, something else about nature in a minute. Look, look, look. If I take a flower and I put it by a window, it's in a pot. Okay. Got the sunlight coming in, the, 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 the morning, the dawn's early light, the sun comes in. And which way that, that, that flower is going to start to lean toward that window? It's going to start to grow toward that light. It's, it's going to lead, you know, and then it gets all crooked, but it's trying to get to that light, you know. And, and so, this, so you take it upon yourself, you turn that thing around 180 degrees, so it'll be leaning this way. The window's over there still. What that flower going to do? It's going to steer, eh, slowly. It's going to go toward that sunlight, go toward the sun, the S O N. And that's what God wants us to do, to go toward the sun, the S U N. And we'll be all right. No matter what it is, we have to rise and move toward the sun. God said that. That's what God did for nature. That's why trees grow up. They're going toward the sun as our example for us to follow the sun, to move toward the sun. That's what we should be trying to do, to reach the sun. That's what it's all about. The upward call is all about trying to reach the sun. First Corinthians 1 9. God is
is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Matthew 11, 27, 28, Jesus said, learn of me. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh, do you hear the call that Jesus is calling you? That means the Sunday morning Bible study. Search the word, read the word, meditate on the word, uh, learn the word. Uh, Wednesday night Bible study. That means to memorize, that means all of these things. Learning of Jesus. That's rising. That's moving toward the sun in obedience to S O N. That's what God called us to do. Uh, 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 so, which way do we look? We look up. Matthew 4 19, Jesus told the apostles to follow me, and he's telling us to follow him. Uh, Romans 8 29, he told us to be conformed to the image of his son. Uh, John 13 15, Jesus said, I have given you an example to do as I have done. That's following Jesus. That's rising up. That's answering the call, the upward call. And something else they gave me for this time, he said, you know, we always heard this before. We heard of a WWJD. What does that mean? What does that stand for? What would Jesus do? Past that. Elementary. Elementary. That's elementary. Questioning what would Jesus do? You should know what Jesus did. If it's about time we grew up to maturity. And don't say WWJD, but say DWJD. Do what Jesus did. That's where we got to get to. Not what would Jesus do, but do what Jesus did. It's time to move and get busy. He's waiting on us. The time is drawing nigh. These are the last of the last days. God is ready to do a mighty work. And he wants us. He's dependent on us, really. He's dependent on us to do it. Don't let the first be last and last be first as it was with the children of Israel. They didn't get the job done, so the Gentiles come in. Don't let the church be to follow the same example. Don't get the job done, but he's going to go out. His job going to be done. He'll go to the highways and the hedges, the byways, and he'll get somebody. Or the very rocks will cry out to get his work done. That's what we got to be about, and that's Jesus talking. He said, uh, 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 at Matthew 5, 40, he said, Therefore, you, we, ought to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that's moving on to be perfect. The second call I want to speak about is going beyond creating things. And this is going to be a little difficult. Moving forward to the next level, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. If you hear the call, you're Christian, you're saints, you're children of God, you're, you're born again. Uh, you know the way to look is up. And the way that you go is also up. You go beyond creative things. You know, today you probably hear these kids talking about, uh, they play all kinds of games. They were talking about what level they own. You know, uh, I'm on level 10, I'm on level 15, I'm on level 50. You know, I got to level 60 in uh, uh, three hours. You know, they cheated. They used cheats. Got to level 60 in three hours. No, but what level are you on? You know what I'm saying? They talking about level. I mean, what if, what if, uh, uh, if the, the, the next level we're talking about moving forward to the next level, what if the next level is holiness? Uh, what if the next level is righteousness? What if the next level is obedience? What if the next level is even heaven? Are you ready? For Jesus come, he could come any moment. What if the next level is heaven? We're on a process. We're proceeding. We're on the refine. We've been refined. We're changing. That's what moving to the next level means. What if it's heaven, though, and Jesus come? What if that's it? That's our goal. That's our prize. We listen for his voice. But if the next level is heaven, are you ready? What did it take to get on uh, that, that level? The upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The next level beyond one other way. One of the things is beyond all created things. You know, you heard the saying, this old expression, you can't see, we can't see the forest for the trees. I mean, we see the tree, but we don't know it's a forest. Uh, we can't see the, I'm going to say this, this is what God gave me. He said, we cannot see the supernatural for the natural. Because we see the natural. And we are so solid and grounded and depend on it and believe so much that we can't see the supernatural for the natural. We can't see the spiritual for the earthly. We cannot see the eternal for the present. And we can't see the timeless because we see and know and measure time. That's why we can't see the, the timeless. That's why we can't see God because we're so dependent and so confined with the time it is. And we, we, we know time. Everybody, okay, okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. What day is this? You know time. What year is this? 
2015? Do you know time? Do you know time? You know time. You just told me. You told me what day it was. You told me what year it was. So you know time. But all of these things, the, the trees, you can't see the tree, the forest for the tree, the trees, the natural, the earthly, the, the, the present, even time. God created all of these things. He created these things, but these things are not God. We must go beyond these things. We must go to the next level. We must go beyond created things to see, to know God, and to meet God. We, we can see that there is a God because of these things. But seeing that there is a God doesn't mean that you know God or if you've met God. We've got to go beyond these created things. And that's what God does for us. He takes up beyond created things. Are you born again? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit a created thing? Is the Holy Spirit a created thing? Do you have the Holy Spirit in you? Well, then you've gone beyond created things. You've got God, Holy Spirit in you. He's not a created thing. You, we already gone beyond created things and don't even know it. And still holding on to those things. Oh, I got to hold on to this time. I can't see. I can't see. I can't know. I, th I believe the word said this. Is, there's eternal. There's a timelessness. There, there's a supernatural. But oh, oh, I can feel this. So I'm hanging on to this. Rock me steady. Hold me. But he's already deposited in us this Holy Spirit lives in us forever. Holy Spirit is not created thing. So we've already gone beyond created thing. And that's where we need to put our focus and our attention. Let me see, I, I give you another example. I got time. We can't see the eternal for the present and we can't see the timeless for seeing and measuring time. Okay, here we go. Now listen, listen, listen. God is timeless, right? God is timeless. He's out, we, we've always heard this. And, 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 and this is part of the confusion that, that messes it up. But this is true now. God is timeless. He's outside of time. Is that true? It's true. Don't have to answer. It's true. God is outside of time. But the thing that fails that we fail to get is this right here, that God is also, and just as important, inside of time. He's inside of time. But that's harder to get to. We can say, if I go a million years out into the future, we know the future because we know time. God is there. If I go a million years in the past, we know the past because we know time, God is there. So all this whole God is that way as far as you can go in time, and God is that way as far as you can go in time. But he's outside of time because he's both places at the same time. So he's outside of time. But there's something that's going to really stretch you. you. You can't get it. I can't get it. How God is inside of time. Take something we can measure. I mean, okay, we know time. We know it's not, not a million years out, a million years back. Let's take something we could, a millennium. We know a thousand years. So we're going to a thousand years out, a thousand years back. Close that down, we know a century. Let's say a, a century, a hundred years out, a hundred years back. Uh, then we can go to a, 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 a score, 20 years out, 20 years back. Decade, 10 years out, front, 10 years back. Break it on down. You know, we can go with uh, a year. We, we can think of a year ahead. We can, we can imagine that. We can imagine a year in the past. We know what we did last year. Don't know what we're going to do in the future, but we know what that, what, you know, that, that time frame, 12 months, we know that. So to break it down to months, we can think about a month ahead. We, we can see that. We can see a month back, right? Yeah, so far, it's easy, right? So we can imagine that. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can sense that. But let's say uh, uh, a week, uh, next week, a week ahead, a week back, last week. Remember a week ago? Sure you do. Let's say uh, a, a day. A day ahead, a day back. You can remember yesterday, don't you? What happened a little bit? You remember something? You know, tomorrow come. You know, we got that on the calendar. You know, we can, we can, we can sense, we can feel tomorrow and yesterday. Okay, look. Let's take it, break it on down. Let's say an hour. You got an hour now. Uh, uh, an hour ahead from right, right now, and an hour past. You know what you do an hour ago? We was in praise and worship. So that's an hour. So okay, we can handle that. We got that. Let's say minutes. We can, we can, we can say a minute from now. A minute ago, I was up there, and now I'm down here. We we no, no a minute. We can we can sense that minute. I'm I'm going inside time. I'm trying to take us inside time to see eternity, to see God. Okay, we inside a minute now. We can take a minute from now and a minute ago. But here where it gets hard and difficult. This is what throws us seconds. Can we go a second now? And a second back? No, that second's gone. Can I go? Can, can I try to go a second from now and think about a second ago? Soon I try to go a second back, it's gone. And that second become that second. And that's those are because we can't time. We're trying to see eternity through time, and you cannot do it. We're so hooked up on this time and counting and measuring time, we can't even see the timeless. 
and then you can break a second on down to a degree. It gets even harder. I can't even imagine that. We can't imagine how we can be inside of a degree. Uh, like we got to be like this, a degree, that side, degree, that, degree, that, degree. No, no, no. We can't imagine it. Are you on the upward call? That's really the question that um, has to be asked after that message. Are you on the upward call? Are you moving closer and closer to the things that God would have for you? Are you walking uh, in, a, in a holier and holier lifestyle? Are you becoming more and more obedient to the word and to the will of God for your life? And if the answer to that question is yes, then great encouragement, uh, great um, blessing, great reward is uh, on your way. But if the answer to that question is, is n no, not really, or I'm not sure, then we need, really need to go back and make sure that we have a right relationship with, with God. And it's important for us to understand that, that, that knowing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, knowing that he came, that he suffered, and he bled, and he died for us, uh, knowing that he ascended back to heaven and that he's coming back again one day, that's not enough to have a personal relationship with him. That, that's the beginning of that relationship, but God's word plainly says to us that we need to make him Lord of our lives, meaning that we need to ask him to come into our heart and surrender our will, our purpose, our plan, our agenda to his will, his purpose, his plan, and his agenda, that we need to submit ourselves to the person of Jesus Christ. And if you've never done that um, today, I want to, tonight, I want to encourage you to, to do that. And as simple as the sense by saying, Lord, I've done things I shouldn't have done. I've made mistakes, Lord, but I, I want to make a change. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to take over my life. I want you to have your way. And I submit myself to you, Lord God, and I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus Christ to become Lord of my life. If you've made that commitment tonight, and I encourage, you, I encourage you strongly, I encourage you greatly to make that commitment because it is the best thing that you'll ever do in your entire life. If you've made that commitment tonight, let us know that. We want to encourage you in the Lord, and we want to send you some information that will help you in your walk, your journey. With, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, secondarily, I want to offer you this book, 100 Days of Inspiration. Um, it's a book for those of you who are, who are going through trouble, who, are, are, are who have encountered the storms of life, if you will. And uh, who, ha who, ha who has not encountered the, the storms of life? Normally, we sell this book for $16.95. Any gift of this ministry will get you this book. So just send, the, send us a gift, and we'll get you this book. Because the Holy Spirit's telling me I need to, have, I need to get this book into your hands. So I want to be obedient to the Word of God. I, I want to uh, pray for you tonight. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, have your way in the lives of those that are listening. Father, I pray that uh, you will bless them, and you will bless them indeed. You will bless them in a supernatural way so there won't be any confusion about where the blessing came from. And I want to pray specifically, Father, for that one who's going through that broken relationship right now. I pray, Father, that they would turn that situation over to you, Lord God, and that they would depend and trust on you completely. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Well, hey, I'm running out of time, so I got to go. But I want you to know I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessing you. I'm, I'm praying for you, asking you to do the same for us. We'll see you next time next week here at, at, at the Anointed Word. Have a blessed week in Christ's name. Amen. Bye-bye.